Is that the man himself over there? It's me. How you doing, Paulie? So, you ready to go? I'm game. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Wipe this thing off. Is that the man himself over there? Where's that accent from, Steve? That's my my pseudo New York accent. How are you, Paul? I'm good. I'm good. Is your family safe? Yes, we're all doing very well. Yeah, thank you. How about you? We're good. We've had a few people with some troubles, but yeah, we're okay. Everybody's okay. Right. So Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in my studio. In oh, I have a man cave called a studio. All um, right. Sporting actually, some I have a couple devices you should recognize. These, oh, yeah. These, these things, the GME EQs. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, you got a lot of nice outboard gear. Yeah, well, I'm a gear slut. Yeah, I know. You, you like that old stuff. I, I have to take you for a little tour around my studio because I'm in my man cave. Yeah, well, you should tell me every time you're selling something, you should call me and tell me. Okay. I want to be, be on the list. Well, that's the funny thing. You know, I don't, I don't really collect cars or any of that stuff, but I love collecting outboard gear. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I hey, you know what? I, got I scored with... the other day. You know what this is? What's that? The controller for an EMT246 reverb. Oh, my gosh. How, I didn't know you could find an EMT246 these days. Yeah, somebody had a broken one, and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll get it fixed, and then whatever the repair cost is, I'll take off it. And he said, sure. Yeah, I I have the uh, the EMT two, I think it's a two forty, the big one. R looks like R two D two. R two fifty, yeah. Yeah, to, yeah. It's a wonderful sounding device for vocals. Absolutely oh, fantastic. Hey, you know, I wanted to mention that uh, you know the acoustic guitar you uh, you made for. Yeah, you did a video with it. Yeah, I used it. Uh, I we uploaded an Instagram today of a. I played the I played that guitar and I sang, which was the first time I actually ever uh, uh, published anything of me solo vocals and guitar. But the guitar sounds just amazing. I mean, check it out if you get a chance. I did, and I liked it very much. Good. Well, thank you. So, do you have? I've got questions for you, and maybe you have some questions for me. So, I know these questions I've never asked you. You up for them? Yeah, you got it. Okay, so if you weren't a musician, Steve, what would you be doing for a living? If I wasn't? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, you know, that I, 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 I've always <laughs> contemplated that, and I, I don't know. I, you know, a it's good a good answer. No, yeah. A musician. If you, made yeah. me, if you made me do it, I'd be a musician. I'd be doing something musically. Uh, you know, uh, I love engineering. I might have been an engineer. Yeah. I like, uh, uh, I, I, there's things about business that I like. You know, but if, if music was out of the equation, I guess one of the other things I really enjoy is architecture. Oddly enough, I, I like to play around in CAD programs and build homes. <laughs> so that's I, and I did all the remodels for our house. So I don't know. That's attractive to me. All right. So I have a, I, I have a question I've never asked you and I've always wanted to ask you, and it's not on my list, but it's something that's important to me. When that Guitar Player magazine came out and that little black 33 record that was flexible was in the magazine and, and everybody yeah. put it on, your mm -hmm. life changed. Our yeah. lives changed. Yeah, what, were you cognizant of how powerful them doing that was? What was your experience? I mean, if people don't know what happened, it was, I mean, I'm old enough to know, but there was this little black record that was, it came in guitar player from this new guitar player named Steve Vai was going to end up singing with the singer from Van Halen. Who is this guy? And now the world knew. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, sometimes you don't recognize the uh, impact that these things have until years later, you know, cause when you're going through it, it's just like, Oh, this is cool. All right. Oh, you know, you know, it's like, uh, when I recorded the Attitude song, which was the song that ended up in Guitar Player, yeah. it was an opportunity for me to kind of get a lot of uh, guitar yayas out, you know? So I, I had all these ideas and I just threw them down there. So that, I didn't think there was anything revolutionary about that. It was just my way of kind of doing it. And then I got the call from Guitar Player and they said, you want to, we'd like to put this in the magazine. I was sure, you know? 
Uh, and then I didn't realize the impact it was going to have. That was one of the, one of the poof, you know, that and then Crossroads and then getting the uh, David Lee Roth gig. <clears throat> These kinds of things were all kind of, they seemed to have been perfectly placed, but it wasn't until later that I could look back and go, wow, every one of those things had such an incredible impact on mm -hmm. my uh, career. So, no, I did not realize any of that back then. It, is the story true that you were uh, transcribing Zappa's stuff for him? Yeah, that happened uh, while it started while I was at college. I was going to Berkeley College of Music and I was 18 and a big Zappa head and I got his phone number and I called him <laughs> and he answered and uh, he allowed me That's to send him. Great. Yes, yeah, crazy, crazy. He allowed me to send him. Uh, well, this was my in. He was an Edgar Verace fan and he was looking for these Verace scores that were in the Boston Public Library. So I was in Boston. So I went down and Xeroxed them and said, I'll send you these scores and a tape of my band, you know, <laughs> and also a transcription. Uh, I had transcribed one of his pieces called The Black Page and a very, very complex piece of music. And he got it and he, he, he uh, wanted to audition me for, uh, but I was too young. When I told him I was 18, he said, forget it. And I, but, he, but he was, I guess, impressed enough with the transcription of the black page that he hired me to transcribe and, and when I was 18. And I started just, he gave me all sorts of stuff. And when I was 20, I moved out to California and joined the band, but continued to uh, transcribe. And it was everything from lead sheets, simple lead sheets, to uh, compiling orchestra scores and listening to them, and you know, to to full-on transcriptions of band pieces. To there's a book that's released called the uh, I think it's called the Frank Zappa Guitar Book, and that has a, it's like you know all of my transcriptions, and they're they're pretty. The story's true. Yeah. So the story's true. Yeah. You know. It's never an accident. That's the, that, it's never an, and it's not an accident. I, it's just. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I mean, was, you were so deep in the rabbit hole. I could imagine that the black yeah. record was just another phone call. Yeah. <laughs> it just, just kind of, uh, everything just flowed. Yeah. You know, everything in my career came, it seemed to have come to me on a silver platter, honestly. And, but I think it was the result of one thing. And that was my, uh, love for the instrument and my love for discovery on the instrument. So that's what I put all my attention to. And as a result, I, the doors started to knock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also having that kind of ear and being able to tr do all that stuff for other musicians is going to get their attention real fast as well. Yeah. So what's your, what's your favorite instrument other than the guitar, Steve? Oh boy. I really like the uh, cello. I like uh, the bassoon. <laughs> so you know, when you say bassoon, I have an amp that sounds like a bassoon. <laughs> you, you have an amp? Like, I have an amp that an sounds amp. like a bassoon, yes. Oh. I, I could pull it out and play it for you right now. It sounds I like a bassoon. That. I think a bassoon, an oboe, a bass oboe are beautiful sounding instruments. Yeah, they're amazing. When you write, when you, when you, I love composing for uh, cello, bassoon, and French horn and harp. French horn's really hard to play. Yeah, I, don't, I never tried. If you get to put your fist in there and move it around. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just unbelievable. All right, that. so, um, are you playing a lot of music right now? You hold up? What are you doing? Well, you know, it's funny. I started doing these uh, Tuesdays and Thursday uh, live streams. And uh, one of them is called Alien Guitar Secrets. And I talk about guitar and music yeah. and stuff like that. And that is, it's, it's taking more time to prepare for it and do it than I, than I thought. And also the Thursday ones, which I just finished, uh, is called Under It All. And that's where I go into all these esoteric talking topics. But uh, yeah, I'm chipping away at uh, a new record. Well, hopefully touring won't be 10 years from now. It'll be next year. I don't yeah, know. we're hoping. All the musicians are worried that their fall tours are going to be canceled. Yeah, I know. We uh, have a Generation X tour pending in uh, early 2021. Yeah. So uh, I, we, might be, we might be safe. 
you know, Steve. Do you have any questions for me, Steve? Oh my gosh, I have the, the beautiful mind itself staring at me and I get to ask it a question. That's <laughs> you sweet. Do know, you do know how brilliant, brilliant you are. You do know how brilliant you are. I know you must. <laughs> and I've been following your career since the beginning and I've always enjoyed watching you navigate through your passions. So what kind of question do I have? Well, I, had, I understand that you were working on some medical technology that was relatively revolutionary. Oh, shit. Is this something I can ask you about? You can ask me about it, yeah. Has anybody asked you yet? No. Okay. Well, I know that it has to do with x-rays. And you want to talk a little bit about that? So my father was a mathematician. Yeah. And he was in charge of the radar project in World War II. So they had a working... Enigma breaker machine, and they had a working uh, radar from the English. And the digital they, harmonic, right? Yeah, that, that's the company now, but I'm just talking about my father's background, and, and I end up being his student. And digital harmonic has two main technologies. One, uh, we can take things that are like you can't see anything, and all of a sudden it looks like uh, the smoke is gone or the fog is gone or – and you can imagine that um, for somebody in uh, the government that's trying to see something through a cloud, that would be a big deal, or Federal Express yeah. landing a plane or this, that, and the other. But even better, you're looking at a mammogram that's all cloudy, and now it's crystal clear. You're right. looking at all that stuff. So um, seven department heads at Hopkins are on our board because they think it's going to have an impact on medicine. But... Um, it has other ramifications. There was a special, Chris Wallace, the, the journalist, did a special on it. Um, the company's called Digital Harmonic, and it's a way of extracting information. So they do it in movies all the time. They give them a file. They say, find, find the person, find the thing, and they clarify it in the movie, and yaha, look, we found it. But the the technology really isn't there, right. but if the information's in the file, you should be able to get to it, right? I mean, if you've got a mammogram and it's all hazy, but there's enough information in the file to be able to make it not hazy, you should be able to do it. So this is the way it works. If you throw sand on a table from four feet away, it looks like a flat table. But if you get a computer and make each piece of the sand – a needle that's sticking up in the air uh, three inches, all of a sudden you can see every piece of sand. I see. So a computer can do that. But not only can it do a positive piece of sand, it can do a negative one too. So now you got holes in the table that are three feet deep and you got things sticking up. And now you've got, you can see every piece of sand very clearly. It's not this just sand laying on a table. That's how it works. Okay. And, and do you spend a lot of time uh, focus on this? Yes, except since COVID happened, I'm yeah. doing every, only things to make sure that my employees are safe. Uh, Good Good we sure. have paid them th- through the whole thing, haven't had done any furloughs or layoffs. Good it's a you. very expensive proposition, but I have very little stomach for uh, uh, really rich people who just laid their people off to keep their money. If you offered somebody a job and you said, I'm giving you a job, it's your responsibility in my world to keep, yeah. to keep their jobs. Hey, I got another question for you. Hey, sweetheart, Steve. Do I, do I have time? You have all the time in the world. Okay. All right. So, Paul, um, I've always recognized you as a creative. Yeah. And you've always marched to the beat of your own drum. I love that. That's how we, that's how change happens. And you've accomplished a tremendous amount. Now in your creative mind, there must be some, uh, some things that you still want to achieve. Some, some things you still want to create. So if I was to ask you, if you had no limitations, if you if, if it, like, like if it was money or time or any of that, and you had no limitations, and you could manifest 
uh, one of your real creative ideas that you've got, what would that be? What is it that you would Get like? Every single do? guitar back that we've <laughs> made and update them all like we did with your acoustic that made you so happy. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. You sent your guitar back and we were able to put all the updates on it and it yeah. came back a better sounding instrument. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. So look, if you own a Stradivari violin, it's in the shop all the time. Oh. It's in the repair shop all the time. We live in a world where your TV breaks and you throw it away. And I want the world back where they're constantly being worked on. Yeah. And, and they're being updated and they're, they're being loved and taken care of. And, you know, in my world, I'm doing everything within six months of making a discovery. We're pretty good about getting it on the guitar. But I know you have some guitars and I've had it back once and I got it better. And if you send it back again, I get it better. To me, these are tools. And if you're going to make a race car, it's going to be in the shop nonstop. And in my world, all I want to be is the person that helps uh, the people that believed in the guitars, right? So we have this repair shop, and we have almost 100% acceptance of the results out of the repair shop. And, we're, you know, Robin Ford just did a video. I don't know if you saw it, but he's got a PRS. And he said, well, Paul said he could make it better. And he sent it back. And guess what? It's better. And he was playing it. And it bring the hairs on your arms up with the kind of sound comes out of Robin Ford's hands, you know, and I, I don't know. You're asking me if I had no limitations whatsoever. Yeah. I'd take, I'd put $50 million and, and pay for all of them to be fit to work on them again, just to bring them back to dad. And let me, let me work on them. That's again. amazing. Uh, that's a, that is an unexpected yet honorable answer. So you would be the police of the integrity of the instrument. I don't know that. I would be your repairman as, yeah, you, as your instrument maker. Make sure that all, all of your instruments continue yeah. to be the best they can be. I right. love that. Thank so you. look, Steve, I asked for the job from you. Please let me make you guitar, okay? And I kind of got the job and kind of don't. But I've done my best. In the meantime... It's still a job I want. I love make, making that acoustic for you and getting it to the point where it was good enough for you to sing with it. you got to be comfortable on an instrument to sing. Singing now that's the so finest naked. acoustic I ever have my hands on. That, that is a brilliant, lovely instrument. I, I almost feel unworthy of it. It's you know, changed the strings a lot. Yeah, yeah. And as far as you know me, and I do have some great guitars, yeah. uh, PRSs, and I, do, I have used them. The, the, the thing about me and the guitar and the gem is that guitar, that gem is just so molded and Jeez. suited to me. It's just, I can't imagine making anything else like, you know, and I love, I love your guitars, you know, yeah. and I, if, if there was any other guitar that I use in the studio, occasionally I use a Strat for a certain sound. Occasionally I'll use a Les Paul. More than more than those, I'll use one of the three of my PRS. Uh, but really, just my personality has seemed to morph into what the gem is. And, I think that's yeah. perfect. I've and I'm never giving you a hard time about. It. I'm like, <laughs> but you're asking me a very wild question, which yeah. is, if I could have anything, what would it be? And it would be that I would be able to convince. Look, I'll tell you this story, and then what you know. My wife, I've been trying to explain to Paige this problem. And, I, and she, did, she, she had listens to me, but, you know, she doesn't really. <laughs> and here <laughs> comes this guy <laughs> in the airport walking by me with an acoustic guitar, an island string guitar in his hands and no case. And I oh. looked at him and I, and I looked at her and I said, Paige, that's the problem. That's the problem. And she goes, what are you talking about? I said, what's he going to do when it breaks? She said, he's going to throw it away. I said, exactly. When your microwave breaks, you throw it away. <laughs> but, but we live in a world of musical instruments and gear. And you don't, you, when, you're, when you have channel five and your console goes down, you don't throw it out. You get it fixed. Well, let me ask you this, Paul. If you would have went up to that guy 
and noticed that the guitar that he was carrying without a case was a PRS, would you have hit him? No, I would have offered him my help. But if it was a piece of shit, I'd probably tell him, you know, it's really a piece of shit. You should buy yeah. a better guitar. I mean, look, you and I, in the stu world of studios, in the world of studios, there is this promise that once in a while you'll find a piece of gear that makes all the tracks better. Mm -hmm. I've heard a few of them. A, a Fairchild 660 actually does make a vocal sound better. Mm -hmm. There's a few pieces of Poltec always makes a guitar sound better. Does it really? Yeah. A real one. An old yeah. one. Real old one. Yeah. 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 Well, I use them. I never don't use them. I have a real Babcock LA2A back there. Nice. A real one. That's nice. an old one. And it sounds, it works every time I plug it in. Bop, bop, done. You know, you know, has an amazing collection of compressors and gear Who? is John Frusciante. He's like a real studio gearhead, and he's got the greatest, oldest, best stuff. It's amazing. I think I have his reverb. I think that's his <laughs> 252. I think that's his 252. That's what I've been told. Yeah. I think he's selling some of the stuff now. Oh, yeah? Well, I know he has some focus rights that, uh, and some uh, Fairchilds, I believe. Does he really? I think so. He's a very good guitar player. I saw him live oh, in concert good. once. It sounded huge. He's such a dedicated player. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. Yeah, it has been fun. Really good. Thank you. I'm really happy I had an opportunity to chat with you. You got, you got more after this? No. You're the swan song today. Okay. Well, it's and really I can tell you, there, there have been some extraordinary conversations of people are their stories and they were telling a lot of stories from high school on mm. just like you did about, you know, how you got this gig and, you know, he picked up the phone and, you know, all that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's been, a, we've had a lot of experiences and I think things are going well and I appreciate you being on really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Paul. And again, thank you so much for all the support and your incredible uh, instruments and the passion you have for Steve. them. That's really it. That's really Glad it. the acoustics doing it for you. See you, Steve. Thank you. All right. Cheers, brother. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>